Hey, everyone. What you're about to listen to is a preview of a bonus episode that is available on our Patreon. If you like this clip, you can grab the whole episode, as well as years of other bonus content, at www.patreon.com slash lionsledbydonkeys. Yeah, my, my hope is at some point, like someone, like an executive somewhere watches this and be like, this would be a good series. This would be a good movie. This would be a good series. Like different, like the, like the terror of the French Revolution would make an incredible HBO show where they could like dump the HBO amounts of money into it, get the big names that they can get, whatever. Or like, you know, again, like I said, any, any other part, because Napoleon is not a small part of the French Revolution, but he certainly isn't the whole goddamn thing. Um, and like, it's it did not swirl around him from the very beginning at any stretch of the imagination. He's kind of like the ending coda of it in a lot of ways. Quite like, literally, yeah. He yeah, booked you know, the shit out of that. Yeah, you know, I mean, <laughs> and like I know that, um, you know, and like Francis and I were talking earlier. I mean, um, and I'm sure you know this too, Joe, because you know when the Waterloo movie came out, it kind of bombed and didn't make nearly as much money. As a result, uh, Stanley Kubrick was going to make a movie about Napoleon that got pulled. He ended up making Barry Lydon instead and then always intended to make a Napoleon movie, which never came to fruition. God, wouldn't it rule if he put Brando in the role? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Brando would play an amazing late stage Napoleon. Yeah, he would have made a, an amazing like w- like Russian campaign, Waterloo, like, you know. Are we talking um, about like prime Brando or are we talking about Brando when he was like fat and had a monkey? No, we're talking no, like Apocalypse, no, Apocalypse Now, now, like, now yeah. Brando. Good, yeah, Apoc- yeah. Apocalypse Now Brando would be great for Russian uh, uh, campaign era Napoleon because like you kind of get a taste of it because Josephine is like calling him fat or whatever. And that is like part of what a lot of people witnessed when uh, you and for people want to hear this ad nauseum go back and listen to our series about the the french invasion of russia but like pretty much everybody in that campaign was like wow napoleon's kind of fat and slow now <laughs> uh, because he had been emperor for a while he's getting older you know he he doesn't have the the vigor that he used to but in this film we have joaquin Fe- never aging joaquin phoenix who lo- they they kind of slightly fake age him at the very end when he's in exile before he dies but he looks the exact same and Josephine is like, well, you got fat. And he's like, he looks the same as he did 10 well, years ago in the well, movie. It's, well, it's one of those things. It's like, you know, they uh, they aged him by like having him grow some stubble. Uh, you know, like that's essentially like, oh, he's really let himself go. He has a little bit of a beard. Like, I don't know, guys, like that's, that's uh, just me tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, Joe. That's you like 20 minutes from now. Yeah, that's um, true. I did shave yesterday, so it's already coming. <laughs> <laughs> so I do I do want to ask. Um, the the relationship between Napoleon and Josephine, um, mm-hmm. the, this uh, it for, first off, a, we love a man who's horny for his own wife. That's great. Um, you don't you we don't love get a wife that. guy. We love a wife guy. He's a wife guy, even though he's you know fucking around on her as is like his you know purview. Um, as yeah, that's as French Amber. culture. I'll yeah. have you know. <laughs> but I I think what my favorite scene, the scene that really stuck with me, um was when he's like kind of courting Josephine and they're sitting there and she just hike, hikes up her skirt and just like, when you look down, you're going to see something you'll always want it for the rest of your life. And she's basically imprinting her pussy on his like psyche. So Joe, is that historically accurate? <laughs> <sighs> no, I mean like they, this whole relationship dynamic they cooked up in the film and like, not to like, again, get caught up in the weeds, they literally did it to make both of them seem worse because it was like, especially as far as like a ruling couple would be very loving and genuine. And the scene where they have Napoleon like abuse her for no reason, absolutely never happened. Like yeah, it, it felt, I say this it felt to someone who it is because it didn't happen. Like there's one thing to make things historically inaccurate for fun, like bombing the fucking pyramids. Like at the battle of the pyramids took place like eight fucking miles away from the actual pyramids. But like, um, you know, to make someone who is like, I I say this as like an admirer of the field of study of Napoleonic history, not an admirer of the man Napoleon, despite like his earlier political ideologies and things that he stood for, because like he was a tyrant. Um, He killed a lot of fucking people, even no matter how noble his goals were, he was a warmonger. But like, you don't have to also make him abuse his wife to make him worse. That's like doing a biopic of Hitler and just having him kick a kitten for no reason. Like, you don't have to do that. 
it's Hitler. We know. Well, it's one of those things, too. I mean, for me, it was watching... I mean, not only was it weird in that way, but it was also there wasn't kind of any change or growth over like it just kind of showed a lot of you know a lot of there were just a lot of scenes of you know uh napoleon and josephine just just kind of like just having the emperor beat his fucking wife in front of a crowd of people yeah but it just like that wouldn't fly even back then but it just i don't know it was just it was really weird just kind of watching them just kind of like stare at each other um and just be uh like I don't know, there there was just kind of no change. There was no growth. There was there was no kind of like I don't know. It didn't feel like there was any development there. It was just kind of them just brooding, sitting next to one another in like eight different scenes over the course of two and a half hours. Yeah, the yeah. only time you get like any kind of like oh they must care about each other is when they have to go through the divorce, and you can see like they did really good at like selling the we don't want to do this, we still love each other, but we have to we have to for the good of the French. Yeah, and that that part that part is accurate. Yeah, I I imagine that they that they would have had that shit written down and they would have been able to do that. But like, and and again, there's all the stuff in in beforehand where you're just like, oh, he's uh, he he really cares for his wife. He's he's a weird little sexual deviant, but like, but French, but for his wife, (laughs) right? Like he's dragging his wife under the breakfast table to bang her. Fucking cool. That's you know, while while all the servants look on, I'm I'm sure that that. Like there's even like letters from his second wife complaining that like he doesn't love her, he only loves his first wife. Um there's also like very weird uh like it makes Napoleon kind of pathetic in the film in a lot of ways. Like it demasculates him constantly um by having his like his wife openly cheat on him. Um which yeah, like, that was that was the other was, thing was again really common. Um, but it wouldn't have been so open. And um like even then, like if you read uh, 1812 Napoleon's Fatal March to Moscow, like you read his letters, um, not only him, but his wife and like his wife, uh, his second wife specifically wasn't attracted to him. Um, they make make her out to be attracted to him. Yeah, they make a big uh, deal out of it, really. Like, But it literally says in her letters that after they had sex for the first time, then she was attracted to him because the dude could fuck like. <laughs> I mean, like, but the movie seems to go out of his way, uh, out of their way to, like, make him seem, like, sexually pathetic, which is really weird thing to do. Right. The, um, one, the one thing that we know about Napoleon is the dude could lay pipe. I mean, yeah, he's the fucking emperor of the French and he was a military officer. Dude got around. Um, but and I'm not saying that's like a gauge of masculinity. Of course, it's not. But like, it's obviously being used as one. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's a, the whole thing was just very strange to me because it did like even the the scene where which was accurate where they're, you know, kind of going through the divorce just to produce an heir and whatever. It just felt forced and weird because it didn't feel like they really gave that much of a shit about one another at any point, really. I think that's how I think that's how Joaquin Phoenix was playing the role of Napoleon. And I love Joaquin Phoenix. We've all talked endlessly about how much we like him as an actor. He was not good as Napoleon. I don't know I mean, what he, he was he, going he fits, for. He, he fits kind of physically as Napoleon. Like he kind of like, you know, he kind of has like a good like, you know, like if your only exposure to Napoleon was like seeing him in like Looney Tunes cartoons uh, against like Bugs Bunny, <laughs> you know, he does a great like, you know, kind or of hand Bill and Jack's excellent adventure. <laughs> yeah, like he, yeah, he, do, he does a great kind of like hand and jacket kind of sneering like whatever, like Napoleon, but he doesn't really like, I don't know, otherwise... He doesn't like he doesn't try to play the role like he he obviously and I'm not saying this is like an insult to Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix is a great actor. He just wasn't suited for this. I don't think like and it's and it's not because he doesn't have the acting chops. I don't think he tried. No, I mean, well, or it's just like the the one note that he got for this entire movie was appear disinterested. Like, you know, yeah. like yeah, that's exactly what he looked like. Like it just like, you know, kind of. Like Joaquin, can you just kind of seem like there's a weird smell under your nose, but also that you're not interested in anything going on around you? Yeah, to quote friends, he was smelling the fart acting. Yeah, I mean, he, he at no point he seems sad. I mean, like when you when he's supposed to be mad or sad, he's hamming it. Like the uh, like there's there's extreme peaks and valleys, and then there's just like medium not like disinterest throughout which is really weird there's, um, there's it, it one makes, it makes napoleon seem like a weird awkward little boy there's one there's one good line reading uh with a lot of emotion 
I laughed hysterically at that and the scene where he's like, and I just found out my wife is a slut and storms away from the <laughs> Yeah. Well, why did you why did you leave? He he's perfect in that too, because it's like, why did you leave your 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 troops? He's like, this isn't the France I left. You've all become too woke. Also, my wife's a hoe. I'm I'm out. <laughs> yeah. He explains it really well. If he just would have stormed out, he's like, I come back and we're bankrupt, and the invasion, uh the invasion forces of, of the British are on our doorstep. You know, am I the one that abandoned France? If he just would have walked away then, be like, damn, that's a good speech. He's like, also, my wife is a slut and just storms away. It's like, yeah, like not necessary, bro. 